All right, in today's Jing, we're going to be looking at the model for monopolistic competition for A2 economics. So before we begin with the model itself, it's important that we revise the, assu the assumptions of this type of market condition. The first one is that there's product differentiation, which means that different firms have different products and that customers can tell the difference. The next one, it follows on from the first, is that firms can set their own price. Because customers know the difference between the different products, they might form customer preferences, which means that firms are not going to lose all of their customers if they set a slightly higher price than their competitors. Um, there are many buyers and many sellers in this type of market. It's very competitive. And there are low barriers to entry or exit. When I think about this type of market, I think about Cheap Eats in Oxford, um, a good example of which is the Mission Burrito. Um, it's obviously differentiated from McDonald's because burritos are different from burgers. The firm can set its own price, as we know from the mission, which charges slightly higher prices than McDonald's. Um, many buyers and many sellers, you can think of G&Ds, Kebab Kid, many kebab vans, lots of places that compete with this, and also low barriers to entry or exit. Um, I reasonably believe that I could set up a kebab van to compete with the mission if I so cho choose to do so. Anyway, um, we're looking at the average revenue curve now for this type of firm. The average revenue curve slopes downwards just like the demand curve because essentially the average revenue curve for a firm within monopolistic competition is the demand curve for that product. Just like the demand curve, there are very few people who value the product quite highly and more people who have a lower value for that product and are willing to pay a lower price. Um, this comes down to the fact that the product is differentiated and it means that they're not going to lose all their customers. They're no longer, as we saw in perfect competition, a, a price taker. They have some control over their price. Because, this is, because we have a downward sloping average revenue curve, we've seen in our lesson before that this means that we will have a marginal revenue curve, which is also downward sloping, and which has a slope of exactly double the average revenue curve. Once we get these two things, we can put the cost curves in, the first of which is the marginal cost curve, the Nike swoosh. And then after the marginal cost, we have the average cost. And as we can see, the minimum average cost is where it crosses the marginal cost. And so with this, we can, we can play around and we can look at exactly where it is that the firm is producing. So our first rule that we said was that profit is maximum where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Assuming that the firms in this, in this market are profit maximizing, they will seek to produce at this area, at this quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. As we can see, that is right there. And so the first thing we need to do after we've got this model is we draw a line downward onto the quantity axis to say that's our quantity. The line also extends upwards through the average cost and the average revenue curves. And from there, we can then trace over to the price axis. We can draw a line um, horizontally to say that we have that level of average revenue and that level of average cost. Now, as you can see, the average revenue at this quantity is higher than the average cost. And so what that means is that we've basically got a, a rectangle where the two horizontal lines are the average cost and the average revenue lines, and the two vertical lines are the price axis and the, the line going up from Q. And what that represents is it represents Q number of products that are being sold, and each one of those products has an average revenue which is higher than its average cost. What this does is it shows an area that is, well, it shows a space in the graph which is essentially an area where this firm is making above and beyond just the opportunity cost for being in the market. This firm is making what we refer to as economic profit, and that economic profit is, as, as we said, it's defined as anything which is higher than normal profit. It's super normal profit, and it will attract other firms to enter this market. So the first graph that you're going to want to make sure that you get down is this one, and you're going to want to make sure that you have a really good understanding that this is a monopolistic competition in the short term where economic profit is possible. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens in the long term. Um, in the long term, because there's economic profit in this market, it attracts other firms. We're looking at those fourth and third assumptions that we said for this model, is that there are many buyers and many sellers, and there are low barriers to entry. So if I see that the Mission Burrito is making economic profit, then I'm going to set up a little kebab van, or maybe a Mission Burrito van of my own, that is going to compete with them. What effect this has on the Mission Burrito is it because there's now a closer availability of substitute, just like we saw at AS Economics, if we have a substitute which is easier to get, um, and we have more and more substitutes coming into this market to chase after this economic profit, we will see the demand curve for the mission shift to the left. 
just like we saw at AS Economics. With this leftward shift, we're gonna draw a new average revenue curve, and that average revenue curve is going to be right there, and that's, that, that's a new situation in terms of what's happened after all these people have entered the market. Because we've got a new average revenue curve, the, ma the marginal revenue curve was defined just as being double the slope of the average revenue curve, so we'll draw a new marginal revenue curve there. And as you can see, the cost to the firm, the marginal cost and the average cost, haven't actually changed. The only thing that's changed is we've seen the average revenue curve shift left as a result of more competition. So when we've got that, those, as we said, the costs are the same. We now look at the new situation. We don't have to worry about the old average and marginal revenue curves because in the long term, these are the curves that we have. Um, we're going to look for the quantity that this firm can produce at. We do the exact same method as we look at our rule. The profit is maximum where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So we find that on the graph. It's right there. And to represent the quantity, we just draw a straight line down from that point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, and we say that's Q, and we can draw that line upwards all the way up to the average revenue and the average cost curve as we did before. Now, you will notice that at Q now, that Q extends up to that point at ACAR, where AC is equal to AR. And if you wanted to define this, you could actually say that AC slopes downwards, and it keeps sloping downwards until it just touches the average revenue curve at that point where Q extends upward, where you've got that line, the, the, um, the, the vertical line from Q that goes up to the average revenue and the average cost curve. Um, the average cost curve is tangent to the average revenue curve at that point, and after it meets that point Q, it then um, it keeps sloping downwards, but it never actually goes below the average revenue line. Um, so if we if we draw out the, onto the price axis at that point Q, the AC and the AR for the firm, we will see that they are actually equal, equal at that point. What that means is now they're, well, the average revenue is equal to the average cost. This firm is no longer making economic profit. This firm is now making normal profit, which means that they are just making enough profit to sustain themselves within the industry. They are making enough profit to cover their opportunity cost. And without this economic profit, there is no longer any incentive for any other firms to enter the market. So this is the long-term stable situation for monopolistic competition. So the next graph that you want to make sure you write down, that you understand, is this one, because this is monopolistic competition in the long term, whereas the other one was monopolistic competition in the short term where economic profit was possible. And the real key to this is that you can explain the function of how it is that you might have economic profit in the short term and then what the steps are to show that in the long term that economic profit will be, um, will be taken away and you have this as the long term situation. So I hope that helped and um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me either by email or in lesson.